I certainly know there's a lot of, been a lot of concern in the media the last few days, but again, I want to continue to emphasize that this is still no time for Georgians to panic. We uh, have no additional cases at this time. Dr. Toomey, my team, and members of the Coronavirus Task Force are in constant communication with partners across all levels of government. I want to thank many of them for being with us today. As you know, I have spoken to the Vice President multiple times. Um, as he continues to roll out information, this is the latest that we have. There are more than 100, I'm sorry, there are more than 100 confirmed cases in the United States. There are a mix of those who were repatriated into the country and then those that have contacted it in the country. The Vice President continues to stress, as we do, that the risk for the American public remains low of contracting the COVID-19. And we encourage and continue, people to continue to use common sense practices just like they would doing, during a normal flu season. Washing their hands, staying at home if you're sick, you know, don't feel like you have to go out and buy masks and other things that, that will not help you. So just there's a lot of information on the CDC's website about those type things and we just want people to be very smart uh, about what they're doing. The federal government has suspended all travel from Iran and China and has implemented this highest level of travel advisories for northern Italy and South Korea. I specifically spoke to Vice President Pence about this late yesterday afternoon and John Selden who's with us from the airport will make some remarks and address some of that briefly here in just a few minutes. All direct flights from South Korea and Italy into the United States have multiple screens conducted before uh, boarding those planes in accordance to directives from the State Department. And like all of you, I'm proud to say that our state lab now has the capacity to, convet, to conduct the COVID-19 testing, which actually started today. More than 2,500 kits have already been distributed to the states. That accounts for more than 1.5 million tests being available and commercial labs will begin ramping up their own testing next week. As of today, the Department of Public Health has started processing these uh, kits in the lab, and as you know, that has been done a day ahead of where we originally predicted that to be, uh, which was tomorrow. Good news out of Washington today, the U.S. Senate has now passed the supplemental budget, the emergency funding bill, with $8.3 billion designed for funding for state and local jurisdictions to help fight the situation that we are currently in across the country. In addition, CMS has released new guidance for hospitals, nursing homes, and nursing home surveyors to prioritize infection protocols for nursing homes. I know this is something that uh, everyone has been concerned about, and obviously for those that have friends and loved ones in those facilities, uh, the federal government and the uh, vice president under the direction of the task force have directly addressed this. CMS has also designated COVID-19 testing as an essential health benefit, which makes testing more easily available to all Americans on Medicaid, Medicare, and commercial health insurance. As I have said before, we have to be vigilant for vulnerable populations and for coronavirus. We know that the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions are the ones that are most at risk. In addition, when you look at the data from South Korea, we know that there have been no deaths among individuals under the age of 30. In Italy, the average age for those who have become sick with COVID-19 is 60, and the average age for any deaths is 81. As you know, members of the public continue to be eager for timely information about coronavirus. In addition to all the health-related guidance that officials are issuing to keep people properly informed, it is equally important for people to be on the lookout for scams. Yesterday, Attorney General Chris Carr, who is with us today as well, and I issued guidance to Georgians to be on the lookout for scams and hoaxes because con artists are always ready to take advantage of people in times of need. Uh, General Carr is glad to address any specific questions that you have when we wrap up. I hope that you'll uh, please continue to share the message to the most reliable 
the, the, the message that the most reliable and up-to-date information is coming from the governor's office and this task force the, and the Department of Public Health as well as the federal information that's coming out from CDC and others. I want to continue to encourage my fellow citizens to remain vigilant in your communities and encourage, um, remain calm, and continue to use best practices. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to John Selden, who is the general manager of Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, and he can give you a quick briefing on the operations that are going on in Atlanta. John, Thank thanks you, for Governor. being with us. Thank you. So at Hartsfield Jackson, we have a very uh, integrated collaborative plan with our CDC partners, our Customs and Border Protection uh, partners, and of course our airline partners and our, all of the contractors who work at Hartsfield Jackson. Um, we are still doing the same protocols with the Customs and Border Protection for uh, Chinese and uh, Iranian travelers will come in, will get mandatory screening. Um, and these are U.S. citizens that are coming back from visiting those countries. That's still happening as we go on. Um, they will then be questioned in uh, initial screening by customs and then followed by a uh, screening in secondary uh, screening by um, CDC with contractors from local hospitals. And pending those results, they will go to tertiary screening, which is done in the CDC quarantine room and, and pending that, if necessary, they are taken to Emory. And so far to date, we've only had one passenger that has been taken to Emory, and that person was released after 72 hours for not having the virus. Um, our cleaning protocols and our emergency response plans and our pandemic plans are fully in integrated. Our emergency operations center at the airport is operational. Our um, EMS staff from Atlanta Fire Rescue are all trained with the correct PPE and ready to roll if necessary. Um, and our cleaning protocols throughout the airport, the escalator rails, the bathrooms, have all been increased, and we are using the EPA-approved peroxide cleaning solutions. Um, our airline partners for all international flights are cleaning their planes from top to bottom on the, on the arrival of every flight. We're cleaning the jet bridges, and as of today, we are procuring numerous hand sanitizers that will be delivered rapidly throughout the airport for our customers and passengers that are of any concerns. Thank you, Governor. All right, thank you, John. All right, All right we're going to open it up for questions. Obviously, Dr. Toomey's here. She can talk about, uh, you know, the up-to-date information on the testing at the lab. And then I think most of you all know the folks that are serving on the task force. If there's any other questions that we can try to answer for you, uh, we'll do that. Richard. Okay. Yeah, no, and I'm glad you I'm glad you asked that because uh, if you are uninsured, uh, we will provide the test for free, so for no charge. And I wanted to make sure that message got out that uh, although it's covered by insurance, uh, it will it, we will not uh, charge for that test. Dr. Chibi, uh, one question we're curious about: now that the state lab can test for coronavirus, can they do this independent of the CDC, or do they still have to go to the CDC for final confirmation? Right. Oh, no, that's a that's another excellent question because it's a it's a work in progress. Right now, uh, we still go back to CDC for confirmation. Uh, we may be at, at some point in the future be uh, not have to do that, but at this point in time, uh, we still are doing that until we're kind of fully certified. Now, are they using the CDC issued kits or are they using those FDA issued? Well, they're both one and the same. They're CDC through FDA um, issued, uh, FDA approved. And we have 150, we were given 150 test kits, and we have gone through already 50. I mean, today alone, we had double digit um, individuals tested. And so, uh, already, because the criteria, the strict criteria that had been in place by CDC has been lifted, we have more uh, leeway in order to approve testing. But testing still needs to come through us. The epidemiology unit uh, still has to approve the testing before it can be sent in to us. Private doctors? Oh, private doctors, uh, hospitals can uh, take the test, secure the test. Remember, these are nasal swabs. These are not blood tests. Nasal swabs. It has to be uh, performed carefully with uh, protective equipment and, and mask and 
eye covering. It can't be just done um, in an open room. So not everybody is able to uh, take the test, no, secure the test. All right, folks, Greg, uh, I'm going to try to jump in and, and try to make sure everyone can hear the question. So if you can just raise your hand, I'll try to call as many people as I can. Greg? Governor, while lawmakers are still in session, are you considering asking them for more resources for a package for legislation that maybe kind of to deal with this crisis? Well, I haven't, I haven't uh, done that yet. I know they stand ready. I mean, we have two uh, legislators that are on the task force, and we certainly appreciate Senator Watson and Representative Cooper being willing to spend their time during this busy time of the year uh, to be with us. Uh, but I, I believe from especially the thing that concerns, I think, Dr. Toomey and I most is the funding aspect of this. Uh, I think the Congress has addressed that. Um, I know that I've spoken uh, multiple times to the Vice President about that. He realizes as a former governor that we are on the front lines of this. We're going to have expenses, and the federal government is going to be working with us on that. They have asked us for what we think those expenses will be, some that we have already occurred so that they can make sure it was in this, this spending emergency spending bill. But look, we stand ready. If there's something else we need to do, uh, we will. But from a legal perspective, working with the Attorney General's office and our attorneys, uh, you know, the governor's office has, has broad emergency powers that open up a, a lot of things that we can do to help uh, with situations, whether the legislature's in session or not. Uh, we're not considering anything like that right now. But, um, you know, that, that I think can give comfort to our citizens. And it's been like that for a very long way, and I think governors have used that wisely in the past. Dr. Chairman, can you talk to us a little bit about the, uh, I understand that there was certain incidences with uh, Asian Americans that are perhaps being stopped and a little bit of fear in the community against Asian Americans. What is your message to them in terms of if they're being stopped or that kind of backlash for that community here in Georgia? I'll say a few words and the governor may want to say a few words as well. I think we are very concerned about the stigma and, and discrimination that has emerged throughout this, uh, th these events, these uh, COVID-19 events. And I think the message is, to the public is anyone can, can acquire coronavirus. It's not unique to the Asian population. It's n not unique to one race or ethnicity. And we, we, sh we need to be very cautious that we ensure the safety of all communities in Georgia and throughout the, throughout the nation. And so we are very concerned. If you look at our website, and I, I'd say our website is, has the most up-to-date information available on what, what's going on in Georgia now. You can see that we actually address that with, specifically, with specific public messaging about that because we are, are very, very concerned. We also have developed a, a PowerPoint presentation which will be posted, if not today, tomorrow, which is available to be used by faith leaders, community organizations, others, to try to, again, address this issue and provide uh, general information to try to quell some of these concerns and some of the misconceptions about what co coronavirus, COVID-19 is, and how it's transmitted. And I, I, would, I would just add, that's one reason I specifically wanted John to talk about the protocols at the airport. I think that should give people a lot of peace of mind about people that are uh, coming in and, and out of the country at this point from, from really all areas that have been affected, obviously, Italy, South Korea, and, and China, and certainly Iran, which have the travel restrictions. Andy? Dr. Tooney, do, we, do you know how many people have been tested so far prior to today here in the We had just a small number tested prior to today and, and, and virtually tripled the number just today with the as we expanded the, the testing criteria. With more testing, you expect to get more positive cases? I, we expect we will ultimately find more more tests, uh, more positive cases, more positive tests, um, because the more you test, the more you find. And, and as we know, 80% of, of COVID-19 cases are are very mildly uh, symptomatic, if at all. So we expect so. Although we do not feel at this time, from any we have any indication that the uh, virus is circulating in the community, that there's wide community spread. We still feel the risk is low throughout the state. And do you, are you concerned about possible shortages of personal protective equipment in healthcare facilities? That's, that's something we're working on actively and we're working on with our emergency preparedness and GEMA colleagues, uh, and not, not only to ensure that um, that, that the hospitals have adequate equipment that we, within public health, because we may be involved in 
in uh, securing these tests uh, will also need the PPE. And so we're, that's part of our preparations that we're undertaking right now. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you.